Right. Week four of the college football season, and we have some exciting games on the slate this week. We have we have seven games we're going to talk about. Um, they all have playoff implications. Jordan, I'll, I'll go to you first. I'll let you start. All right. The first game that we're going to break down for you comes in uh, South Bend, Indiana, between the Fighting Irish and the Buckeyes, right? Um, first off, like, like Jake said, this game has major playoff implications. This is the first of three games that Notre Dame plays against Ohio State, USC, and Clemson. Obviously, if Notre Dame goes 11 to 1, I think they have a decent shot to get in the playoff, right? You would have wins over, let's just say they beat Ohio State and Clemson, right? You'd have a win over Ohio State and a win at Clemson. I think that might be enough to get them in, but let's break down this game. Notre Dame finally had the quarterback back and win the ball, a, a ball game with his arm. Uh, Sam Hartman. We've seen the uh, we've seen the ex- um, explosiveness that Notre Dame's offense can play with in the first uh, few games here. Um, the running back, who I apologize, I'm blanking on his first name. I think it's Carlos. I apologize if I'm getting that wrong. SMA, he is a dynamic running back. When you partner him with Sam Hartman, this Notre Dame offense can be really explosive. Jake, what are your initial thoughts on this game? Yeah, I mean, SMA is just a explosive running back for Notre Dame, but I, I really think this game boils down to how well the quarterbacks play. You know, Sam Hartman for the Fighting Irish and Kyle McCord for the Buckeyes. You know, we always saw what, we always see what Marvin Harrison Jr. is and he beat he, Mika Ibuka. We always know what he is as well for Ohio State. Um, So, I mean, I really think it's how McCord and Sam Hartman plays. You know, and this is the first real test for the Fighting Iowa, so we'll see how this goes. Evan, how about you, man? Yeah, so in terms of quarterback, I think you guys hit the nail on the head. Edge Sam Hartman in Notre Dame. I think uh, Sam Hartman has 13 touchdowns, correct me if I'm wrong, already, and they're moving the ball. They have, you know, they've had some talented names in the past, but he really is talented. So older, experienced, I think he's like 23 or 24 years old, but we'll see how that goes. I think this game, and Jordan touched on this a little bit, uh, is huge for Notre Dame because they have the big three on their schedule. That's Ohio State at home, USC at home, and then you get Clemson on the road later in the season. I don't think they're going to beat USC. I think Caleb Williams is on another level. I've talked about that before. Uh, But they're in that game. That's not a for sure. That's just my personal prediction. I don't think they're going to beat USC. So then you have the Ohio State and the Clemson game. Well, Clemson, they've been historically super unlucky, but that's still going to be a game. This is what I see to get a big win for Notre Dame, their best shot. They're at home. Ohio State has, yes, they finally went off on offense last week versus Western Kentucky. Uh, But up to that point, they had not been playing that good um, on offense. Of course, Marvin Harrison Jr. and all that. So it's going to be uh, interesting. It's going to be an interesting game. I don't think we know the outcome. Ohio State is the favorite uh probably but uh i i see notre dame competing in this yeah i mean yeah, I so think... let's go to project let's go to predictions real quick Gordon, i'll let you stop i have notre dame winning this game 27 23 i think the home field advantage for the iris plays a role in this and i think sam hartman leads a late touchdown drive to solidify a monumental huge win for notre dame Jake? yeah ohio no game is definitely going to have home field advantage, and the home field advantage will play into it. But I think Ohio State's offense with, you know, Mar- Marvin Harrison and Kyle McCord is just too too much. I, I got Ohio State winning this game by 10. I got them 31-21. Evan? College football works. It's magic. We just talked about their offense. I think both defenses show out. Uh, give me Ohio State to get the victory 24-16. to 16. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Clemson, Florida State. This game, to me, could be a quote-unquote changing of the guards, right? It has been Clemson's ACC for the last seven years or so, winning, I believe, six of the last seven ACC titles. Correct, again, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but this definitely could be a changing of the guard. Now, this game is at Clemson. Obviously, we know that is a huge advantage for the Tigers. Um, we all know how Clemson looked in week one against Duke. And um, to put it lightly, not very good. And then we saw Florida State, what they did to LSU, especially in the second half. Uh, I believe that game was tied at halftime, and then Florida State just took over. Um, But 
this will be a huge game to watch, especially for uh, playoff implications, right, for Florida State in particular. With that LSU game, they, they have room for margin to maybe lose this game and still run the table. But um, so that that just tells you how big this uh, how big that LSU win was. Jake. Yeah, Keon Coleman and just and Jordan Travis were the big names to watch in Week One. Um, you know, Will Sibley's been on a tail for Clemson well right now, but I think you know the Week One blowout loss at uh, against Duke. Obviously at Clemson. So against Duke, and then they beat Charleston Southern, which is not impressive at all. I don't think Clemson stands a chance in this game. Really, you know, this is FSU's. This is really FSU's first chess since Week One against LSU, and I think they passed this with flying colors. How about you, Evan? So I disagree with I that. Disagree. I think I think Clemson, no question, is. A top 10. Well, maybe not no question. I think for sure they're at least a top 15 team. I think when it's all said and done, they will be a top 10 team again this year. I think, yes, the Duke loss was very bad. Duke is a respectable program. They shouldn't have lost that bad, uh, nevertheless. But, they're, you know, games like that will happen sometimes. You're not going to be perfect all the time. I mean, even Alabama's experiencing that a little bit this year. Jake mentioned correctly that Will Shipley, you know, quarterback has been a problem for Clemson a little bit since Trevor Lawrence left. Well, come on down, Will Shipley. Have a, He's off to a great start running the ball. And then um, Jake says Charleston Southern isn't a big deal, but I think they put up 66 points. I think they destroyed FAU. Uh, so they're getting that offense back on the right track, no matter who the opponent is. Now, the real question is, will, what Jordan Travis will we see? Will we see the one in Boston College or will we see the one who destroyed LSU? I think uh, that that's debatable. I think Jordan Travis is a great player. I think both of these teams, in terms of the roster, are actually pretty compar- comparable. Uh, but obviously, FSU does have the star in Jordan Travis. So uh, that's going to that's gonna be the matchup. Which Jordan Travis will we see? Yeah, and uh, I mean, so... I still think you got to keep an eye on FSU wide receiver Johnny Wilson. You know, he didn't have a breakout game against LSU necessarily, quote unquote. But I think um, against the Clemson secondary, I think Johnny Wilson could have the breakout game that we are expecting he'll have this season. All right, on to the score predictions, guys. Um, I'm going to let Jake go first, actually, on this one. Jake, who wins this game? Like I mentioned, I think this will be the breakout game for Johnny Wilson. I think he'll get three touchdown passes from Jordan Travis. I think FSU takes this one thirty one to fourteen. Evan, I think I think FSU plays, or I, excuse me, I think Clemson plays a good game, but they do lose. Give me FSU uh, thirty eight twenty eight. They will show up uh, in the bright lights in Clemson. All right, so Clemson obviously has their back against the wall, right? We mentioned that Week One game against Duke. Florida State did not have an impressive showing against Boston College, but they won. I think Clemson will come out with more desperation, and the Tigers will pull the upset in this game. Might not be an upset when this uh, game gets played, but give me Clemson, 28-24. to 24. All right. On to Oregon and Colorado. And what might be the most anticipated game of the weekend because of what Coach Prime has done at Colorado. Um, turning this program around, the, the Buffaloes went one in eleven last year, and they've already tripled their win total. We'll see what happens the rest of the year, um, but I think that um, both offenses could put on a show in this game. I think it's going to be a shootout. Uh, Bo Nix and Shadur Sanders are both uh, legitimate quarterbacks, not only in the Pac-12 but um, college-level quarterbacks. Uh, Evan, what are your initial thoughts on this game? Okay, first of all, to Jake, my sports better. I think Oregon is favored by 21. To me, that is, and I do not say this a lot, that is free money for Colorado. Colorado will cover that spread. 21, this is going to, I agree with Jordan, this is going to be high scoring. Uh, you got Bo Nix on one side, Shadur Sanders on the other side. Uh, it's going to be high scoring. Well, I, I, this game, I don't know, because I like I said in the Colorado, Colorado State topic, Colorado has just been challenged over and over again. They're still winning. This is probably their biggest challenge to date. I will grant them that. Uh, but, you know, I they could win this game. Uh, and I'll save my score prediction for a little bit. But that, that's my thoughts on that. Jake? Yeah, I agree with you both. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I think, um, you know, you got Sugo Sangos on the one side. And, you know, even without Travis Hunter, players up to Travis Hunter, though. 
you still got Xavier Weaver and you got Jimmy Horn. So I think Sugar Sanders is going to go over 300 yards once again. But I also think Bo Nix on the other side is going to go over 300 yards with his targets, like Troy Franklin and, you know, Bucky Irving in the backfield. So I think this is going to be a very high scoring game. And we forget Oregon is a scoring machine. They scored 71 points against Portland State. I don't care that was Portland State. Putting up 71 is impressive. And they scored 55 points last week against Hawaii. So, you know, and Colorado's coming off that walk-off win last week against Colorado State. So I think this will definitely be a good game. We'll see what happens. Jordan, score predicting. Um, like I said, this will be a shootout. I see both teams scoring in the 40s. Uh, give me Oregon winning 45-40 to 40 as both quarterbacks will throw four touchdown passes. Evan? Oregon 49-42, I think. One thing, and I forgot to mention this on the Colorado Colorado State video, mainly because I was tearing into uh, Colorado State's coach, but I think one thing that's wrong with Colorado is they – they need to run Dylan Edwards more. They need to get him a little more established. And I know they have great receivers, uh, but, you know, a little more healthy backs of him could work. But anyways, uh, I see them throwing the ball a lot in this game. I don't see them following that advice. It will be close, but give me Oregon uh, by a touchdown, 49-42. Yeah, this game will definitely be close. I think, like I say, I think both quarterbacks go for 300 yards, and I'm going to agree with Jordan. Both quarterbacks have four touchdown passes. But I really think this game is going to be close. Give me Oregon 45-42. All right, on to some other games here. Um, Alabama Ole Miss. Al- Look, the quarterback situation at Alabama is a mess right now. I don't think there's anybody that would dispute that. Uh, you've got Ty Simpson, Jalen Milrow, and Tyler Buckner at uh, Alabama. And um, I just wonder if one week is enough to clean up this situation. You've got Wayne Kiffin, who is known for offense and his uh, lane train, as it is known, coming into Tuscaloosa. And I just don't think that Alabama can uh, hang with them. Give me Ole Miss 26 to 10. Evan? I disagree with that. I think Alabama has shown, yes, the quarterback situation Jordan is correct with is a mess right now. But Alabama, outside of a very good Texas team that might make the playoff this year, uh, has been phenomenal on defense. I think defense will – I know Ole Miss is good, but they're not great. Uh, Alabama will win this one because their defense. Give me Alabama 24-10. to 10. Yeah, as Jordan mentioned, you know, Tyler Buckner um, started last week against South Florida, and they won 17-3. And then um, Ty Simpson came in in the second half. But, you know, Nick Saban's already confirmed that Jalen Millwell will start this game against Ole Miss. And, you know, you got Lane Kiffin on the other side. You got Jackson Gall. I think that, you know, Millwell struggles once again. Give me Ole Miss 21-17. All right. On to Washington State and Oregon State. So, DJ Uyunglele transferred to the Beavers from Clemson in the offseason. And he played fairly well uh, throughout his uh, time there so far, which I believe is three games. Uh, Washington State, not this, not this past week, but the week before that, had a huge win over Wisconsin, who most people believe is to be the uh, favorite in the Big Ten uh, West. Um, I think home field advantage matters in this game. Um, give me the Beavers to win 28 to 20. Jake? Yeah, and I was going to mention this in our Heisman video last week. You know, Washington State quarterback Cameron Ward is number six on my Heisman voting, by the way. Um, I think Cam Ward is just too much for this Oregon State defense. Um, you mentioned DJ Ungerle. You know, I think he he does well again. I think he's those with 200 yards, but I think, you know, like I mentioned, I think Washington State is too much to me. Washington State, 28-24. Give me, uh-huh. give me Oregon State. I think they have too much expectations. They're, I think they're ranked like 17, 16, 15, somewhere around there, Jordan. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's 16, I believe. 16. Okay. They have a lot of expectations. Both teams are very good. Uh, but give me Oregon State, 38-21. All right. Penn State, Iowa. And what could be a – an old-fashioned Big Ten just looks best, right? We all remember that game. We all remember that Penn State-Iowa game from, uh, I can't remember how many years ago. That was like 5-4 or something like that. Um, but this year's version has uh, 
a new quarterback for Penn State, right? Drew Alar. The expectation is very high at Penn State, but they're facing an Iowa defense, which, let's face it, has always been stout. Um, they don't really give up a lot of points. Um, can Iowa score maybe 30 in this game? Um, I don't know if they can. The, the Penn State defense is really good. Uh, give me 20, give me 23 to 14. Penn State wins it at home. Evan? 33 10 Penn State. I don't think Iowa's going to show up to that game. Uh, it, it, you said it's at Penn State? It's at Penn State, correct. Yeah. I Sometimes they'll play good defense at home, and they're a good defensive team overall, but I think Penn State is pretty special this year. I Yeah, 33 10. Sticking with that. Um, I just have one question. I know the game's in uh, in Penn State. Um, Jordan, is this a national whiteout game? I believe it is. Yeah, and we all remember a couple years ago how loud that place got, and Iowa had to burn a touchdown on the first play of the game. Um, Wait, I got you I know, got like Jordan. There. I think you, I think you mean Michigan burned a timeout, right? Or yes, that, that okay, was Michigan. Yeah, yeah. no, there you're you good. go. No, but this is if this is the wild game, we can just imagine how loud this place will get on the first play of the game. Um, if Iowa chooses to get the ball first. Um, like Jordan mentioned, this is a big test for Drew Log. And, you know, on the Iowa side you got Kay McMara McGamera. Um, so I think both quarterbacks will give it out. I think all of these games have the quarterbacks going out, but I think Penn State will take this one in the end. Give me Penn State thirty one twenty eight. All right, and the final game that we will cover today is UCLA visiting Utah. This is a monumental Pac-12 game early, right? Um, we talked about it in the Pac-12 uh, season preview that the, the Pac-12 is really loaded. Uh, you have all these top teams facing each other, and this is the first time that we get this with uh, the Bruins going to Salt Lake City to face the Utes. Um, I think that Utah wins this game 38-34. Evan? Yeah, Utah, I, I talked up Utah uh, this uh, offseason. I thought they were going to bounce back. They've been good, but they've been, I mean, they barely beat Baylor, and I forget who they played last week, but um, I think they'll still, they should win this game. UCLA doesn't impress me either. As for a score prediction, give me um 30 to 20, Utah. Yeah, I think going into this game, I think um, the U's are unsure on the availability of Cam Rising. And I think, um, you know, um, UCLA is obviously starting Dante Moore. Uh, they has got Carson Steele. You know, it really depends on who Utah starts at quarterback, even they go with Brandon Barnes or they go with Nick Johnson. If Cam Rising indeed cannot play, um, I still don't think they can keep up with UCLA. Give me UCLA 31 